and welcome to Fullness of Life program. I am George and my wife Madonna. We welcome you and trust God is going to minister to us and through us about his goodness. Today we have the privilege to talk about my best friend and my teacher, the Holy Spirit. My second best friend is my wife. My first best friend is the Holy Spirit. And it so happened also we're in a season that is called Pentecost. Pentecost is defined in the Old Testament, the harvest, feast of the harvest. And in the New Testament, Pentecost is the day when the Holy Spirit fell on the church for the first time, fell on the apostles and the believers as the Lord Jesus have told them to do. Stay in Jerusalem until the promise of the Father come. And they were all waiting in one, in one accord, praying, waiting with expectancy. And here it comes. There was such a big noise and the Holy Spirit looked like it's, it sounded with wind and sounded like big wind is coming around them. And uh, tongues of fire appeared above their, their heads. It was not real fire. It appeared as fire. And they began to speak in other languages and they all understood each other. That is the day also the word Pentecost means 50, the day of 50. In the Old Testament, it was 50 days after the Passover. In the New Testament, it was 50 days after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ and 10 days after he lifted up to be with the Father and told the disciples and the apostles to wait for the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to you and me today in, in this program and this current life and the world is going through lots of commotion, torment about all sorts of disease, COVID-19 they call it at this time and the lockdown and stuff. What does it mean to you and me and the Holy Spirit fell few uh, like a couple thousand years ago, 2000 years ago to be precise. Well, it means the comforter came. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. Amen. The Holy Spirit is the helper. Amen. The Holy Spirit is God in the spirit because we do believe in the name of the Father, of the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. And we believe in God in the triune persons, meaning the three Godhead in one. So today the Father sent his spirit. The Lord Jesus is in the logo, the word, the logos, and the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Most of the people do know this, this verse or do know like I used to do in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that's it about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> or, that's all we knew about or him. Or most prayer meetings uh, and in the verse that they made the love of God, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. What does it mean the fellowship of the Holy Spirit? The fellowship of the Holy Spirit means that you have a friendship, you, mm. have, a uni, you have a bilateral Amen. relationship, a communication. You ask him question, you seek him, you, you wait on him, you read the scripture with, with expectation that he's going to teach you the scripture. You are about to make a decision in life that is at work and you ask him for help. You know, being a lawyer myself, the first time I learned to, to experience the fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it was through difficulties at work. I would read the file, I would read the contract, I would study all the, the documents necessary for the, for the case. And I feel there are, there are so many things I still wish to know or not knowing. So I would wait on the Lord. I say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me. Mm. And that's how I developed my friendship with him. I would, I would wake up in the morning, starting my day saying, good morning, Holy Spirit. Not just the typical traditional name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit like parrots. No, I took time to study the word, to speak to him. And he is today as I practice. Mm. And he taught me so many things. One because of the he's God. He's e alive. Exactly. That's what we miss to understand sometimes. E we think he's somewhere far off, just like we would think of Father God. And then that Jesus is already in heaven as he rose again. But Holy Spirit is with us today. Yes. You know? Yes. We are living in a dispensation of a period mm. of time that is the period of the Holy Spirit. You know, before the, before the, in Genesis, uh, it is mentioned that the Holy Spirit hovered. Mm. He was not doing anything. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come unto certain people like the prophets because God used to speak to his people through the prophets. So the Holy Spirit would visit the prophet for a word or a season and then will lift off. And today in the New Testament, because God in his presence manifested in the Old Testament in the temple, and not anywhere in the temple, in a specific place called the, the Holies of Holies. Holies. And only the high priest could go there. 
Today, in the New Testament, when the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost, it was a, it was a symbol, it was a, it was a sign that it, God does not live far away from people, mm. does not live or manifest His presence in a stony place like mm. the Ark of the Covenant. God wants to live in us. This is we why became the Holy of Holies. We became Glory the Holies God. of Holies. And also, 1 Corinthians says, don't you know that mm. your bodies are the temple, temple of the Holy, Holy Spirit? Spirit? So before the Holy Spirit comes on us, we are, so to speak, dead spiritually. When the Holy Spirit comes on us, we are alive because He is alive. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there, there is, is freedom. freedom. There is uh, deliverance. There is quickening so that's the sign of the holy spirit coming into our life Amen. in my life as a lawyer again i learned the bible with the help of the holy spirit in mm. business i learned to talk to him and listen to him and and uh, one time he gave me like a, a strategy we call the triple l mm. you listen to the people in the meeting <laughs> in the business meeting they're negotiating they're telling you the case they're they're fighting with you they're complaining whatever the case may be with one ear you listen to the people with the other ear you lock, lock. to the holy spirit uh, yes what do you want me to say? What do you want me to do? And you wait. And these like a second with, with sound or look and feels like it's three days. But mm. then suddenly you would have a quickening on the inside. You, I would hear a word. I would see a word with my, with my eyes and I would lunch. Mm, it's the, the listening, the locking and the lunching. And yeah. since I got hold of that strategy, which is Holy Spirit led strategy, mm. I start seeing victories in my meetings. I still had to uh, prepare, I still had to study, I still had to, to have the meeting, yeah. but when I brought the Holy Spirit as a partner, that's mm. what fellowship is about, is partnership, having supremacy. He is the boss and Amen. I am the follower. Amen. And that's why I, I, I call him my best friend, my teacher. Go ahead, honey. Uh, what, what I feel to say is because Holy Spirit is a spirit and we are spirits who live in this mortal body and we have a mind, we have a soul. So when Holy Spirit Spirit is going to talk to us, speak to us, uh, 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 refresh us. It's going to be in our spirit, spirit to spirit. John uh, uh, 4, it says, uh, John 3, it says, the, 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 um, the Holy Spirit, the Father, seeks worship, worshipers who worship Him in spirit and in truth. So if I realize that Holy Spirit is going to uh, speak to me in my spirit, if I am aware and I acknowledge my spirit being, and then in my spirit, I know what's going on. I would feel it and then it would go up to my mind and then I can understand what's going on. But most of the time we get confused because we expect God to speak to us in our mind, in our logic and the way we think it's logical. So if we really realize our spiritual being, get, uh, get used to being in tuned with our spiritual being who is alive, who is uh, renewed by the Holy Spirit, this is where we can start really connecting with Him and understanding and locking then I am able to log, then I am able to know because I realize I am a spirit, not only a soul, a mind, a will and a physical body. True. The best way to learn how to connect to the Holy Spirit or how to learn His ways is to give Him a vocabulary. Mm. And the best vocabulary to give Him, uh, as the Lord Jesus said in, in, in John 16, He will take from me and, and speak you. to you. Amen. He called Him the Helper, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. He's not going to talk to us in a language we are not familiar with. And that's why the Lord brought into our hands the scripture. That's why also in 1 John 5, he said, there are three witnesses on earth, the, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. Hallelujah. The Spirit is here to teach us the Word of God. This Word of God that we have in our hands, the Bible, was inspired by the Holy Spirit through the various and numerous writers. Amen. So first of all, for me to start understanding his language, like let's say I, I want to learn Japanese. Mm. If I only could say three words in Japanese, good morning, good evening, and bye, that my, my language, my communication ability yeah. is so limited to three words. Yeah. If I learn 10, I will speak more. If I learn more about I want to eat and I want to stop and I want to go to, to school, I will, I will learn a little bit more. The Holy Spirit language is the scripture. So the more I study the scripture, the more I give him a room and vocabulary and space for him to deal and speak with me. Amen. So today uh, in the Pentecost, this took place 2000 plus years ago. The implication to me is that I am no longer an orphan because the Lord Jesus said, 
in the body when he was walking back and forth in the earth. He said, it is better for you, for me to go. It is to your advantage for me to go to the Father, meaning to go to the cross, die, and raise from the death. The people were like, what? Why? Don't do that. Well, think about it. When people wanted to see the Lord Jesus when he was in Jerusalem, right. they had to go from China to Jerusalem <laughs> to meet with him in his physical body. But when he died and rose from the dead, and 10 days later on, on the day of Pentecost, he sent his spirit. Today, wherever we are all over the world, we have access to God in the Spirit, in the wow. Holy Spirit. We have the scriptures in our hands, and as we pray, the Holy Spirit is here to lead us. What does the Holy Spirit, you have something to say? Yes, because uh, in, when Jesus was here, only Jesus could do what he can do. But now that Holy Spirit is here, everybody can do what Jesus has done, because the same Spirit who was in Jesus Christ, the man at the time, who got uh, rid of his quote-unquote uh, deity to be a man, he was empowered by the Holy Spirit and power to go about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the by the enemy by the devil now today that same Holy Spirit lives in us and we can do exactly because Jesus said you will do the work that I do you shall do also and do greater as well not by own, our own power not because we are righteous but because Jesus made us righteous and Holy Spirit lives in us and by his power we can do everything he asks us to do, like the song we're gonna sing today. Okay, you have a song for yes. us? Go ahead, let me hear it. And this song, by the way, I have no clue about music, I have no knowledge about music, and you don't wanna hear my voice <laughs> singing. But the Holy Spirit gave me more than 300 worship songs when I was in the desert, and when I was uh, in fellowship with him, and the Lord gave me a beautiful wife who has a beautiful voice. I let you be the judge. Go ahead, honey, <laughs> sing that song. Oh, holy Lord, oh, holy Lord, your kingdom come, your spirit flows. Oh, holy Lord, oh, holy Lord, your kingdom come, your spirit flows. Unto your church to do your work, to see the lost and bring them home. Oh, holy Lord, oh, holy Lord, your kingdom come, your spirit flows unto your church to do your work, to heal the Your kingdom come, your spirit flows unto your church to do your work, to free the bonds and break the yoke, oh holy Lord, oh holy Lord, your kingdom come, your spirit flows. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Madonna. You know, uh, what does the Holy Spirit, where does the Holy Spirit dwell today? The Holy Spirit dwells in the heart of every believer who believes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, King, and Lord. What a privilege. So now the Holy Spirit chose to live in us, whereby in the Old Testament, that he used to live in a in the temple in the in the ark of the covenant or he used to manifest his presence because he's still all over the world before the song you were saying that today the churches work to do the works of jesus mm. i used to think jesus himself as the son of god could do miracles could uh, miracles of healing raising the dead uh, uh, praying for the sick uh, making the the three two, three uh, uh, pieces of bread uh, to feed uh, multiplying them to feed thousands of people of course he is jesus the son of god until i read the scripture and i learned that he is 100% the Son of God. He is 100% God the Son, and He is born of the Virgin Mary, yet He is 100% human. And while He walked 
to and fro the earth and his earthly life as a as a human being he set aside his glory and operated as a normal hundred percent human being you like you and me <coughs> led by the holy spirit and i'm gonna prove it from the scripture that that word in the scripture was the proof for me in uh, acts 10 38 mm. it says how god the father meaning uh, anointed jesus christ of nazareth with power mm. and he went from place to place doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil that tells me several things he was operating as a total human being mm -hmm. and he was listening to the father locking and listening and lunching as led by father god through the holy spirit and he his will was to heal all those who were oh. oppressed by the devil another example he was hungry in john 4 uh, if he was only god god could not be hungry Amen. in his human nature as 100 percent human he was hungry and uh, john 11 he cried this is the shortest verse in the bible it says jesus wept because at the at, at lazarus uh, tomb he wept because the people were like if you were here he would have raised from the dead i wish you were here but guess what today we could not say that word i wish you were here yeah, because he, he is, is no here. longer Amen. he is no longer limited to a physical body to be in one time at one place today he is really in his fullness Hallelujah. as an omniscient fully uh, full of knowledge all-knowing omnipresent he is present all over the world and he is there at all time so mm. god is everywhere at all time and with all, all his power, power with all his power so we have to rest that wherever we are in the world in lebanon in asia in in africa and america wherever you are he is with you mm. you know a few years back when i came from the u.s i came to the gulf countries there was no church and I thought because there was no church building per se like I am used to in Lebanon or in the US, I was alone, God is not with me. And because of that mindset, which was wrong, I, 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 I took the Bible and I started reading out of like curiosity or boredom. Now I understand that was the Holy Spirit leading mm. me to tell me that I am with you wherever you are. And Alleluia. my favorite two words of the Lord Jesus before he was lifted up to glory he said lo i am with you always, always. until Alleluia. the end of time Alleluia. wow what the comforting news that mm. i am never alone you are never alone if you call on the name of the lord you are never alone if you let him show you how much he loves you you are never alone so what does the holy spirit do today on the earth he will convict us of our sin. And what is mm. the major sin, honey? What is the it's sin? It's not believing in Jesus. That's the major sin. Most people think <laughs> that's, that the major sin is, is looking with the wrong eye, thinking with the wrong thinking, lying. Uh, lying, stealing. These are wrong and these are sin. But those are part of the old nature. Those are part the of the nature. sinful nature. Yeah. But the main sin is not relying on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ to save us from that sinful, sinful nature. nature. That's the main sin that the Holy Spirit calls us and convict us, in other words, follow us and stir us and keep cornering us, leading us and shining to us. And until we surrender and say, yes, Holy Spirit, I believe Jesus Christ is uh, Lord. Jesus Christ died and rose for me. I believe in the Lordship of Jesus. We are no longer sinners in the sense we can always sin because our free will is no longer, uh, is, is never taken away from us. It will always stay with us. That's the part of, uh, of our uh, special species, being special species, God created us unto his own mm. image, meaning we have a free will. So as long as I am alive on earth, I have my free will. I could choose to do wrong. I could choose to do right. It's up to me. But when I am no longer under the old nature, when I was born into the spirit of God, as John 3 when says, I free when I, I get law, free, I get free from the sinful nature and I move into becoming a son or mm. child of God. If I say son, that means daughter. When I say Amen. a child of God, everybody is a child of God. So when I become a child of God, the Holy Spirit's job now is not to convict me of 
my domain sin because I am no longer a part of the world. He continues to do that to the world, meaning to those who are not following Jesus Christ and his teaching and allowing his spirit to dwell in them. When I am a child of God, the Holy Spirit remains at work. What does he do? He leads me and he teaches me. He teaches me the word. He speaks to me about things in the Bible, things that are not written in the Bible. Do you mm -hmm. know that in the Bible it was not written that I am to marry you yes, or you to marry me? <laughs> but the Holy Spirit, when we prayed, he gave us peace, yes. directions yes. over a period of time, confirmations yes. from others. He spoke to our hearts and yes. it became so sure that you are for me and I am for you yes. and you are the gift from God. He guide us in our prayers. Many times, many times we pray out of our five senses. Mm. I, I understand that, you know, we, we have a need and somebody call me, somebody is in a, chi a, a child, somebody's child is in the hospital, I have financial need, I have something that my emotions are stirred up, my mm. mind is, is, is tricked by it, so I start praying with my flesh, so to speak, my five senses. But as you l wait on the Lord and let the Holy Spirit help you, because in Romans 8 he says, for we do not know how to pray as, as we, we ought, ought to. Amen. But the Holy Spirit, again, the Holy Spirit, the helper, the comforter, the teacher, the guide, the counselor Amen. comes in and settle us and lead us to speak always by the word of God. That means according to God's will. So when we learn God's way, when we learn the Holy Spirit way, we could never fail. And you know what? Failure at the beginning is part of the deal, part mm. of the growth. So when I was a child, I walked like a child. I hit the table as a child. Yeah. But when you grow up, you start mastering walking. Yeah. And so is the walk of faith. So is the walk with the Spirit. Mm. So wherever you are in life today, I would encourage you to open up and say, Holy Spirit, teach me your way. Become my friend. Show me how you meant for you uh, to be my teacher. I don't understand it all. And grab the Bible and start reading. And now when you go to church, listen to the Holy Spirit. Open up your heart. Let him guide you through your spirit, through your heart, so you could become aware of your being three parts. Yes, a it's, spirit. I understand that it's a fellowship at the end of the day. Exactly. It's not a set of rituals that we have to do. That's why Holy Spirit was sent to us. It's so we can have exactly a relationship. It's it takes really, time and it, it ameliorates with time. Exactly. So don't let, uh, you know, in Isaiah 11, it, it, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom. Who could use wisdom? I always mm. need wisdom to handle you, honey, to handle <laughs> yeah. the kids, to handle the job, to handle, yeah. to handle the people around us. The Spirit of understanding. Whoa, hallelujah. You know, sometimes I understand how to do things. Applying that understanding mm. takes wisdom. The strategy how to apply the understanding and the knowledge is wisdom. The Spirit of counsel and might. He is the best lawyer. Hallelujah. Most people think when I'm working with them, they say, how did you get this idea? They think I am that smart. I say, the Holy Spirit helped me see yeah. that and that spotting the issue it is called. Uh, he gives me knowledge. He gives me reverence of the Lord. Mm. I don't take the word of God lightly. You know, most people say, I love you, honey, sweetie, I miss you. I don't use word lightly. I learned it from God because every word in the Bible is yes and amen. amen. And every word of God will come to pass. And the Lord Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away but not one word of my words. How comforting is that Hallelujah. to put your trust in an infallible word of God in the person of Jesus Christ with the help of his spirit, you become a full understanding person of the love of God. Hallelujah. Indeed, how much God loved us. So God loved the word that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life. Most people think, by the way, eternal life is someday somewhere there mm. in, in, in the glory. Well, eternal life, I have good news for you. I learned it from John 17, 3. This and this is, is eternal, eternal life, life that they may know, know you, you, Father, Father God, God, and Jesus Christ who you send. Amen. So if you know the word of God, if you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you are indeed living in eternal life here on earth. So when you pray, Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come, your will be done 
in oh, heaven oh, as oh, it oh, is oh. in heaven on earth as it is in heaven on earth his will is to be manifested on earth because it's very clear in heaven <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that one day we will understand as we walk in his teachings as we walk in fellowship with him in the life of prayers in the word he guide us as it is in heaven it will come to pass this is on how we can earth. live the life the fullness of life exactly exactly we are getting we are coming to a close of this uh, of this uh, episode. I pray that the Holy Spirit touch your heart, comfort it, encourage it, so you will connect with Him from now on. And until we meet again, write to us at Karam GM, Karam GM at hot at Gmail, and we will be glad to answer any That's questions Karam, you may have. That's Karam K A R A M G M at Gmail dot com. Hope you. to hear from you. <laughs>